Welcome to the McGregor video guide to stringing your top wire. Our two types of top wire are metal tie wire and monofilament cable. If you have a polypropylene fence less than 500 feet long and your risk of falling branches is small, then you do not need tie wire and you can skip directly to our video on hanging your fencing. Regardless of your wire type, you will need the following supplies. A short step ladder, 8 inch zip ties, and a pair of wire cutters. If you are stringing metal tie wire, then the only other item you need is the wire itself. If you are stringing monofilament cable, you must tighten it, which can be done in several ways. The first way is with U-bolt clamps and circular wire tensioners. To use this system, you will need circular wire tensioners, their tensioning handle, U-bolt clamps, and a small wrench. The second method is with oval-shaped metal sleeves. To use this method, you will need metal sleeves, a crimping tool, circular wire tensioners, and their tensioning handle. The third and final method is using a system of gripples. For this, you will need only gripples and their gripple tool. Whether you are using mono or tie wire, it is helpful to lay out the wire before you begin attaching it. Give yourself an extra foot of length on either side to attach with. Note that your sleeves, U-bolts, or gripples should match the gauge of your monofilament cable. To terminate a run of monofilament with a U-bolt clamp, first string the wire through the clamp. Then take the wire around the back of the post and through the clamp again. The clamp does not need to be tight around the post because it will be suspended by the brace band. Now tighten the clamp using your adjustable wrench. Make it as tight as possible so that a falling tree branch or an extreme deer impact will not pull the cable from the clamp. When it is securely fastened, clip the extra cable off with your wire cutters. Oval metal sleeves are used in much the same way. Pass the cable through the sleeve around the back of the post, and through the sleeve again. Now, fetch your crimping tool. Slide your sleeve into the appropriate slot on the mouth of the tool. Generally, two crimps are made per sleeve, so be sure to allow enough room for a second one. Pull the handles together to make your crimps. We do not recommend this method for anyone without substantial strength because you are, in essence, bending metal. If you have a polypropylene fence and are anticipating serious deer impact from a large or aggressive herd, you may want to consider running an additional wire along the middle of the fence at a height of 3 to 4 feet. To use the gripples, thread the mono through one of the gripples small holes, run it around the back of the post, and back through the other small hole in the other end of the gripple. Now fetch your gripple tensioning tool. Apply it to the wire in the way illustrated here. There is also a diagram of how to use the tool on the packaging which it comes in. To open the channel in which your cable will sit, you must open your tool all the way. Once the wire is in place, slowly close the tool and it will tighten the whole apparatus. Don't tighten it too much now because we still need to slip it up to the top of the post. Regardless of which method you chose, you must now slip your terminated cable up the post and attach it to the brace band using a heavy duty 8 inch zip tie. After it is securely fastened, clip off the extra tail on the zip tie so that it does not hang down. If you are using angle iron posts, 
Then you attach the cable directly to the holes at the top. Shown here is a U-bolt, but if you're using a gripple or sleeve, it is just the same. If you are terminating your cable on a wood post or a tree, then you must drive in three U-nails at the height you wish to run your cable. One of these goes on the back of the post, and the other two go on the sides. Run the cable through your clamp or gripple, and then through all three nails, bringing it back to where it began. To terminate your cable on a tree, the process is the same. The only difference is that you will use 2 inch U nails instead of 1.5 inch U nails. Now that you have all your ends taken care of, attach your cable to your line posts. With round posts and angle iron posts, this is as simple as zipping it to the brace band and cutting the tail. If your line posts are trees, then you will use a 2 inch U nail to hold the cable in place. Move it to your desired height and hammer the nail in around it. Make sure that it still has room to move under the nail and that the nail is not pinching and weakening the cable. To attach to a wooden line post is very similar. You do the same thing except use a 1 and 1 quarter inch U nail rather than a 2 inch U nail. If you are using U bolts or oval metal sleeves, then get your circular wire tensioner. If you have gripples, then use your gripple tool to tighten the cable until it runs straight. To use the circular wire tensioner, First remove its pin and place the tensioner on the line. Insert your handle tool into the slot on the tensioner. Slowly turn the handle and watch the cable tighten. When it's not sagging at all anymore, place the pin back in to hold the cable in place. Now remove your handle tool and leave the tensioner on the line. Tie wire can be terminated without any tools by going around the back of the post and twisting around itself. Tie wire works well for short runs of fencing, however for long runs we recommend the monofilament. This is because the mono will give a little bit if a branch falls onto it, unlike the tie wire which may snap. Tie wire is also useful for going around curves. In the case of a curve, Use a short run of tie wire between each set of posts. When you have twisted the wire around itself three or four times, cut the extra wire off with your wire cutters. The tie wire, like mono, attaches to a round post's brace band. It can also be attached directly to the top of an angle iron post or hammered into the side of a wooden post or tree. The line posts are attached in the same way. Now, no matter what posts, wire type, or termination method you used, you should have a tight top wire running along the tops of your posts. You are now ready to move on to the attaching your fencing video.